Question 11. Explain secondary research or background reading. Answer. Secondary research or background reading. This method is widely used for information gathering by accessing the gleaned information. It includes only previously gathered information used by the marketer from any internal or external source. Advantages. It is more openly accessed with the availability of internet. It provides valuable information with low cost and time. It acts as forerunner to primary research underlines the focus of primary research. It is used by the researcher to conclude if the research is worth it as it is available with procedures used and issues in collecting them. Question 12. What is feasibility study? Answer. Feasibility study. Feasibility study can be considered as preliminary investigation that helps the management to talk decision about whether study of system should be feasible for development or not. It identifies the possibility of improving an existing system, developing a new system, and produce refined estimates for further development of system. It is used to obtain the outline of the problem and decide whether feasible or appropriate solution exists or not. The main objective of a feasibility study is to acquire problem scope instead of solving the problem. The output of a feasibility study is a formal system proposal act as decision document which includes the complete nature and scope of the proposed system. Steps involved in feasibility analysis The following steps are to be followed while performing feasibility analysis. Form a project team and appoint a project leader. Develop system flow charts. Identify the deficiencies of current system and set goals. Enumerate the alternative solution or potential candidate system to meet goals. Determine the feasibility of each alternative such as technical feasibility, operational feasibility, etc. Weight the performance and cost effectiveness of each candidate system. Rank the other alternatives and select the best candidate system. Prepare a system proposal of final project directive to management for approval. Question 13. What are the types of feasibility? Answer. Types of feasibilities. Economic feasibility. It is evaluating the effectiveness of candidate system by using cost slash benefit analysis method. It demonstrates the net benefit from the candidate system in terms of benefits and costs to the organization. The main aim of economic feasibility analysis EFS is to estimate the economic requirements of candidate system before investments funds are committed to proposal. It prefers the alternative which will maximize the net worth of organization by earliest and highest return of funds along with lowest level of risk involved in developing the candidate system. Technical Feasibility It investigates the technical feasibility of each implementation alternative. It analyzes and determines whether the solution can be supported by existing technology or not. The analyst determines whether current technical resources be upgraded or added if that fulfill the new requirements. It ensures that the candidate system provides appropriate responses to what extent it can support the technical enhancement. Operational feasibility. It determines whether the system is operating effectively once it is developed and implemented. It ensures that the management should support the proposed system and its working feasible in the current organizational environment. It analyzes whether the users will be affected and they accept the modified or n EU business methods that affect the possible system benefits. It also ensures that the computer resources and network architecture of candidate system are workable. Behavioral feasibility. It evaluates and estimates the user attitude or behavior towards the development of new system. It helps in determining if the system requires special effort to educate, retrain, transfer, and changes in employees' job status on new ways of conducting business. Schedule feasibility. It ensures that the project should be completed within given time constraint or schedule. It also verifies and validates whether the deadlines of project are reasonable or not. Question 14. What is system design? Answer. System design is the process of defining the architecture, components, modules, interfaces, and data for a system to satisfy specified requirements. Systems design could be seen as the application of systems theory to product development. Question 15. What are the inputs and outputs of system design? Answer. System design takes the following inputs. Statement of work. Requirement. Determination plan. Current situation analysis. Proposed system requirements including a conceptual data model, modified DFTs, and metadata. Data about data. Outputs for system design. System design gives the following outputs. Infrastructure and organizational changes for the proposed system. A data schema. Often a relational schema. Metadata to define 
define the tables slash files and columns slash data items a function hierarchy diagram or web page map that graphically describes the program structure actual or pseudo code for each module in the program a prototype for the proposed system Question 16. What are the types of documentations in system design? Answer. It comes to system design. There are following four main documentations. Program documentation. System documentation. Operations documentation. User documentation. Question 17. Explain system documentation. Answer. System documentation. System documentation serves as the technical specifications for the IS and how the objectives of the IS are accomplished. Users, managers and IS owners need never reference system documentation. System documentation provides the basis for understanding the technical aspects of the IS when modifications are made. It describes each program within the IS and the entire IS itself. It describes the system's functions the way they are implemented. Each program's purpose within the entire is with respect to the order of execution, information passed to and from programs, and overall system flow. It includes data dictionary entries, data flow diagrams, object models, screen layouts, source documents, and the system's request that initiated the project. Most of the system documentation is prepared during the system analysis and system design phases. During systems implementation, an analyst must review system documentation to verify that it is complete, accurate, and up-to-date, and including any changes made during the implementation process. Question 18. Explain user documentation. Answer. User documentation. It includes instructions and information to the users who will interact with the system. For example, user manuals, help guides, and tutorials. User documentation is valuable in training users and for reference purpose. It must be clear, understandable, and readily accessible to users at all levels. The users, system owners, analysts, and programmers all put combined efforts to develop a user's guide. User documentation should include a system overview that clearly describes all major system features capabilities and limitations description of source document content preparation processing and samples overview of menu and data entry screen options contents and processing instructions examples of reports that are produced regularly or available at the user's request including samples security and audit trail information explanation of responsibility for specific input output or processing requirements procedures for requesting changes and reporting problems, examples of exceptions and error situations, frequently asked questions, FAQs, explanation of how to get help and procedures for updating the user manual. Question 19. Explain program documentation and operations documentation. Answer. Program documentation. It describes inputs, outputs, and processing logic for all the program modules. The program documentation process starts in the system analysis phase and continues during implementation. This documentation guides programmers who construct modules that are well supported by internal and external comments and descriptions that can be understood and maintained easily. Operations documentation. Operations documentation contains all the information needed for processing and distributing online and printed output. Operations documentation should be clear, concise, and available online if possible. It includes the following information. Program systems analyst, programmer, and system identification. Scheduling information for printed output, such as report, execution frequency, and deadlines. Input files, their source, output files, and their destinations. Email and report distribution lists. Special forms required including online forms, error and informational messages to operators and restart procedures, special instructions such as security requirements. Question 20. What is documentation control? What are the advantages of documentation control? Answer. Documentation control. Documentation is a process of recording the information for any reference or operational purpose. It helps users, managers, and IT staff who require it. It is important that prepared document must be updated on regular basis to trace the progress of the system easily. After the implementation of system if the system is working improperly, then documentation helps the administrator to understand 
understand the flow of data in the system to correct the flaws and get the system working. Programmers or systems analysts usually create program and system documentation. Systems analysts usually are responsible for preparing documentation to help users learn the system. In large companies, a technical support team that includes technical writers might assist in the preparation of user documentation and training materials. Advantages It can reduce system downtime, cut costs, and speed up maintenance tasks. It provides the clear description of formal flow of present system and helps to understand the type of input data and how the output can be produced. It provides effective and efficient way of communication between technical and non-technical users about system. It facilitates the training of new users so that he can easily understand the flow of system. It helps the user to solve the problems such as troubleshooting and age. Helps the manager to take better final decisions of the organization system. It provides better control to the internal or external working of the system.